Dark Echoes is an underrated Roblox horror game that a lot of people don't know or care about. It's a four-player game where you find yourself using gadgets to hunt ghosts and solve puzzles. But don't worry, it's not another Phasmophobia clone like Spectre. We already have three of those and that's plenty. What's interesting about this Roblox horror game in particular is that it prominently features voice acting. There was an attempt, that's all I'll say for now. Evidence of the paranormal. Will your family be okay with it? I'm sure they're gonna understand. Apparently I'm supposed to be saying this at the start of my video like a proper Roblox YouTuber, so... As always, make sure to like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and subscribe for more! I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games, and today I'm reviewing Dark Echoes. This game only really came under my radar because the creator told me about it, and he says that he wants real feedback and criticism. I can see why someone would say that, because there's this expectation that even the most subpar and boring Roblox horror games will get players and upvotes so long as they abide by this homogenized formula. I mean, come on, Pita Pita and Nightlight are literally the same game. Except one set in Japan. You find objects in a set location while monster chases you. And when you finish, oh boy, guess what? You have to repeat the same thing again. And the children eat it up every time. After playing games like Weird Strict Dad and Weird Sus Grandma, I'm kind of happy that I could find a story game that looked like actual passion went into it. And also a game that I could just relax and play with my friends. Bro, Dolly? 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 Why is she such a baddie? I mean... However, since it doesn't abide by the homogenized Roblox formula right now, this game is kind of flying under a lot of people's radar, but I don't think it particularly deserves that, at least compared to what I'm seeing get popular right now. I did not see any sort of YouTube buzz surrounding this game. Not even Rogert played it. And he plays every Roblox horror game with such bursting enthusiasm. I got this. You I got this. No! It's fully alive! Dark Echo starts out with a cutscene showing that you're assuming the role of a paranormal investigator who's trying to get rich quick by taking pictures of a ghost. The first thing that you're probably going to be noticing here is how quiet the voice lines are. It's not a matter of my volume being cranked too low, because the sounds of lockers opening overpowers the voice lines. Also, there's a girl later on in the game who has the exact opposite problem. More on that later. While traversing your way through the building, you notice that the doors that you need to get through are blocked by wooden panels, and you're then tasked with circling around the building in order to get where you need to be. Also, one of the characters says this, Excuse me, what are you yapping about? That bothered me. Then you have to do this little puzzle with paintings in order to unlock a door. This is literally Resident Evil, I'm literally Leon S. Kennedy. Actually, there's a guy you come across who says he needs help finding his daughter. Then he tells you to run and hide because something is coming to kill you. I don't actually know how to beat this segment, at least in the intended way, because I died like three times and I still managed to somehow make it past. I hid in a room and ended up dying anyways, even though I didn't see or hear the monster anywhere near me. But thank you, game, for not killing me and making me pay for a respawn. At some point in the game, you find a key labeled Cell Block A Key, but it doesn't let you use it on the Cell Block A door. I, I, I don't know. This is one of those games where you don't get a lot of freedom, okay? The doors labeled Cell Block A don't actually open using the key, but the unlabeled doors opposite from them do. After you watch a cutscene of a spooky wheelchair, the game teleports you to Chapter 1, Phase 2. Now you're in the auditorium. This game, being set inside of an abandoned and Asylum reminds me of Roses. Remember that video? Yeah, don't play that game. You draw a pentagram and start a ritual in this cool little cutscene plays where this ghost creature crawls down. It's like conjoined twins or something. Or cat dog, if they were in a niche Roblox horror game. This is a boss battle that I was kind of interested in when I was first shown pictures of it. Because what I want you to note here is that there's no background music, just creature noise. Wow. Dude, the scream is so fucking... It's kind of awkward and doesn't really build any sense of urgency. You're just four people stuck in a room with a butt-naked creature that's constantly screaming and shit. I mean, credit where credit is due, it's not ear-piercing loud like Chain. But it's just 
It's just weird, okay? Your character says stuff like, I figured it out. The creature is sensitive to flashing lights. Every 15 seconds, the cameras take a photo. I like when games tell you information through character dialogue, but I think it could have been executed a lot better if there were perhaps four different characters playing off of each other instead of four identical clones of the same guy. Or, at the very least, just one other person in the party talking. Yes, I know that there's a guy on the phone, but come on, I barely know anything about him. Admittedly, I liked the creativity with the amount of time before a picture being displayed on the projector on screen. And I liked how all of the chairs and shit floated up to make room for an arena. Kind of wished you kept a little bit of debris everywhere so that the boss arena has some flavor to it, instead of it just being a giant rectangle. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of this monster design. I can't put my finger on it, but the concept of the conjoined twin is scary, but it's just that I guess the design itself isn't very well executed. It's it's just a little plain, like it was AI generated. There's also this weird logical inconsistency in which one could ask, why would you need to use these cameras to flash it when you have handhelds? And in fact, the game kind of actually answers this question because you, you can use your handheld it's just weaker. Is the flash on your handheld really just weaker, I guess? I don't know. I guess we really are in Resident Evil 4. Where's my flashbang when I need it? After you set the creature on fire or whatever, some ghost girl walks on stage. Her mic is the opposite of the male actors. I appreciate the effort that she puts in, though. She also has these little minions that look like the zombies from Those Who Remain. Wait, wait, wait. Did the developer of this game work on Those Who Remain? Okay, no, he didn't, but it's just a really big coincidence. Then she sends them to get you. And then you jump to this cutscene where you're in a hallway full of smoke and there's a clown ghost. And then you get sent to an infinite loading screen where you get stuck and trapped forever. I don't understand what just happened. We, we sat in that screen for like four minutes and then we just left the game and pressed all F4. But what's funny is that you actually can't get back to these checkpoints from the lobby. Like, I can't teleport back to chapter one part two. I can only start chapter one from the beginning, which I don't want to do, by the way. And judging by the sharp drop in the amount of players who beat Chapter 2 versus the amount of players who beat Chapter 3, I'm going to assume I'm not the only one here. Alright, so I tried playing Chapter 3 a second time, like I started from the beginning, and I ended up crashing, so I just had to... I just had the creator teleport me or whatever. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the creator watches my videos and gave me the YouTuber role or whatever. Thank you for that. Chapter 1 Part 3 really wasn't worth all that trouble in my opinion, and it definitely should have been called Chapter 2 because there's a definite change in setting, an introduction of a new character, and everybody expecting to play all three parts in one sitting is dumb and stupid and bad game design. Maybe split up the parts, improve the pacing a little, make the game a little more player friendly. Come on, Demilo, you're a big kid, you can do it. Okay, so the chapter starts off with this cutscene showing that you were captured by this ghost woman and her little those who remain looking guys. Then they run away and leave the cell door open. While we're at it, I appreciate that the design of these guys is a little more consistent with the blocky Roblox style that your main character uses. The reason why I don't like this chapter is because it's kind of boring, and the opening cutscene set up by this evil woman as someone to take seriously, but then you're introduced to a new villain at the end of it anyways, and the evil woman and her guards are stupid enough to leave a cell door open even though there's no other tasks at hand. Or maybe there are. Maybe she and her guards have other things that they're focused on, like fixing the lights, or monitoring the cameras, or cooking and cleaning. I don't know their job's description. Your objective here is finding a crowbar and a key while a roaming monster attacks you. And it's really goofy because when you get chased, your screen fills up with text telling you to run, but it never stops. It just keeps going. So theoretically, if you get chased long enough, it just completely fills up your entire screen. This actually does happen, by the way. This chapter is also a slog to play solo. Don't play solo was the worst mistake of my life. The puzzles in this chapter aren't puzzles and aren't unique and are kind of annoying, actually. Then you escape the prison and have to find a screwdriver to open a vent. If you don't find the screwdriver in time, then the game will illuminate the object in blue. Just like doors! My my favorite game, guys. I... 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 I I mean, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could. To be seriously, I kind of actually like this feature. There's also a side quest that requires you to collect five books to open a secret bookcase. I really didn't want to do this, so I didn't. After unscrewing the vent cover, your character says something like, Seriously? A maze? Okay, self aware, yes, but still kind of dumb. Like, oh, mazes are so bad in these Roblox horror games, as I do the thing, anyways. Can I also mention that the voice line delivery in this chapter is especially a little off? A maze? Are you kidding me? I mean, the tone and delivery just feels very unenthusiastic about the chapter. 
it's kind of a metaphor for how I feel about this chapter, as well as the player base as well, apparently. I mean, to be completely honest though, the vent section isn't too bad. It doesn't have a roaming monster, thank god. And then it would have been actually as bad as that Roblox game called The Vents, which is god-awful. Don't play it. Anyhow, you have to avoid the guards because they're looking at you in the vents by having flashlights. So their flashlights are custom built to be red. You know what would have been a lot better? If the red eyes that the guards have just illuminated proper light? This would have been helpful in the first segment because you would be able to tell where the guard is and what direction he's facing a lot easier. You know, like how the killers in Dead by Daylight have a red stain. And then later, when they're looking for you in the vents, they're not shining red flashlights, they're just using their red eyes. On another note, I like the vent jump scare. Then there's a cutscene where you walk in on your friend and the ghost girl, oh no, she's working for him and he's the main villain, oh no. Then you have to do a chase that involves quick time events and I use that term loosely, I guess. I ended up dying here like twice because I wasn't properly informed that you have to spam click. I just clicked once and thought it was fine. So yeah, you do that little goofy chase and end up teleporting reporting backwards anyways, and that's the end of chapter one. Dark Echoes is a rather innocuous game. The beginning is not that bad in my opinion, and it's a nice change of pace from the usual find item in an area with the roaming monster type levels that Roblox horror games have grown to rely on over the years. However, segment three is a letdown compared to the other chapters, and there seems to be a rush in pacing here through the story beats. I believe that chapter one should have ended at the boss fight, ending at a cliffhanger, then chapter 2 would spend time developing the ghost girl more and more, as I believe that's what they were trying to do, they just weren't very good at it. Because the ending introduces your friend as a villain and acts like I'm supposed to care, but I'm not because there just wasn't enough time spent with these characters. Or rather, the time that was given just wasn't utilized well. I appreciate the ambition with the voice acting, but Larry and the main character sound the exact same, no offense, they're probably played by the same guy. The only one who seemed to be actively trying here was the ghost girl. I acknowledge that none of you probably have voice acting experience, but I can only see real effort in her performance. Which is odd because you think that you put your strongest voice actor as the main character. Maybe the reason behind this decision is because Larry and the main character sound the exact same, and it would be weird having them talk to one another. Maybe you should put me in the ring. I'd win. But yeah, it's a little odd that this game doesn't have as many players as other Roblox horror games because this one isn't really that bad. And the gameplay, even though it has flaws, is a lot more stimulating and interesting than games like Nightlight or Pita Pita. Maybe they should have set the game in Japan and had the main antagonist be an old Roblox character. Then it would be fly with the kids, I don't know. So yeah, this game actually isn't that bad. I kind of liked it. Too bad literally nobody seems to be playing it on YouTube. And by the way, I'm not saying this because I'm friends with the creator. I'm also friends with the creator of Those Who Remain. And my review on that game was largely negative. Alright, once again, I'm Bredian. I talk about niche Roblox games. Thanks for watching my video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share because my videos cover niche topics and are unlikely to reach many people. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.